I've been testing GPUs here on the channel for years, but I've never tested an Intel graphics card. Well, that changes today as I've bought this Intel Arc A750 to see if it's as much as a polarizing GPU as what it's led to be online. From what I can see, Intel graphics cards are a bit of an acquired taste. People either love them or they hate them. There's no real in between. So I've decided to test for myself to see what all the hype's about and to see if this is actually a good GPU at both 1080p and 1440p gaming. Save some money on your next PC build with today's sponsor, GVG Mall. I've personally used GVG Mall to activate some of my PC builds and they're sorting you out with 25% off if you use code YAM. GVG Mall offers both Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys and if you want to save a bit of money, you could buy the Windows 10 Pro key and upgrade to Windows 11 free of charge. This is if you've got Windows 10 installed. Just copy and paste the code you receive into the Windows activation box and there you have it, an activated copy of Windows. Now you can enjoy your PC without any interruptions and you can also personalize it as well. So don't forget to use code YAM for 25% off of your Windows OEM key with the link in the description. I picked up this RK750 limited edition on eBay for just £209. That's almost the same as new pricing. However, this GPU is basically new. There's virtually no dust on it and it was boxed as well with the papers. So as far as I'm concerned, this is basically a brand new GPU. And after hearing online that a lot of people are saying that the Intel graphics drivers are just not that great at all and it's not even worth picking up an Intel art card because the driver support's so bad, I knew I had to test for myself. Anyways, the RK750 is the newest GPU to be featured here on the channel as it launched at the tail end of 2022. Back then and still now, it was geared towards a 1440p and 1080p gaming experience and it boasts decent specs with 3584 cores, 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory which runs through a 256 bit bus. All of this is in a package rate for 225 watts so Intel kind of need to work on their efficiency, but I'm sure they'll do this over time with multiple generations. And ray tracing is a possibility on the RK750 thanks to its 28 ray tracing cores. So, will the A750 be a decent performer at both 1080p or 1440p, or will driver issues plague its performance? To find out if it's actually worth picking up in 2023 and 2024, I've tested it in my GPU testing PC, which also doubled as the all Intel gaming PC, a video which you can watch up here. The specs of this system are an Intel Core i5 12400F, 32GB of dual rank, dual channel DDR4 memory running at 3200MHz, an MSI B660-A Pro motherboard and a crucial BX500 1TB SATA SSD. I've left the A750 at its stock out of the box settings and I've also enabled resizable bar as Intel Arc graphics cards kind of need resizable bar because their performance isn't particularly great without it. So let's see how the Arc A750 gets on at both 1080p and 1440p. First game up today is actually a decent performer on the RK750 and that is Cyberpunk 2077. With the high preset enabled, Cyberpunk actually looks pretty decent and the performance was great as well, getting 78 FPS on average with a 1% low of 62 frames per second. This means the performance is nice and smooth at 1080p and to be fair, this is probably the preset I'd recommend if you want a game at that resolution. Raising the res up to 1440p though sees the average drop down to 55 FPS and the 1% low down to 47 frames per second. If you were to do a bit of tweaking with your quality settings, you will easily get 60 FPS on average at 1440p in this game. So the RK750 is a decent performer in Cyberpunk. Enabling ray tracing is not particularly brilliant in Cyberpunk. At 1080p, it was still technically playable, getting 30 FPS on average with a 1% low of 22, but you are losing more than half your performance compared to the rasterization. And the same stage true for 1440p as well, as the RK70 got just 18 FPS on average with a 1% low of 13 FPS. So long story short, don't enable RT in Cyberpunk 2077. Four noise up next and the RK750 is almost good enough for a 240Hz experience at 1080p as it got 229 frames per second on average 
with a 1% low of 115 FPS. That 1% low isn't particularly brilliant, but one thing I've noticed with Fortnite Chapter 5, it isn't particularly the smoothest game anymore. However, up in the resolution to 1440p, we do see some weird data. The average does go down to 176 FPS, which is what I was expecting, but the 1% low went up from 1080p going up to 132 FPS. This probably means that 1080p, the RK750 was pretty CPU bound. So if you want to play Fortnite on an RK750, it's totally playable, but maybe 1440p is the resolution you should look out for. Forza Horizon 5 looks absolutely amazing on the Ultra preset and performance with the RK750 was amazing as well. At 1080p, 86 FPS on average with a 1% low of 71 frames per second is good performance in my book. This is the quality preset I'd recommend for 1080p. Switching up to 1440p and great performance again, getting 72 frames per second on average and the 1% low also stays above 60, getting 64 FPS. So Ultra is the quality preset I recommend with the RK750 in Forza Horizon 5 as it looks great and it performs great. I would be lying if I said the performance in God of War isn't particularly brilliant on the A750. That is because setting it to the high preset, not the ultra, the high preset, netted pretty, let's say, average results, getting just 66 FPS on average with a 1% low of 59 FPS at 1080p, which is playable, but compared to competitor GPUs, this isn't particularly brilliant performance. 1440p sees the average go down to 54 FPS, with a 1% low of 48 frames per second. One thing to note, God of War is a DirectX 11 title and arc performance on DirectX 11 and other APIs isn't particularly brilliant, so I suspect that is doing something here. It doesn't take long to get back to good performance though because F123 on the high preset netted some decent results. 122 FPS on average and 101 FPS for the 1% low at 1080p is not bad performance in my opinion. And if you wanted more frames, consider dropping it down to medium if you want a 144Hz experience at 1080p. Switching up to 1440p sees the average go down to 101fps with a 1% low of 86 frames per second. So performance here is very smooth, albeit it is a bit lower than 1080p, but then again you could always drop the quality settings if you wanted a 144Hz experience. Enabling ray tracing actually does net playable performance in F123, but as always, I don't recommend it as you get minimal quality gains for a lot of performance lost. At 1080p with RT enabled, the RK750 gets just 60 frames per second on average, which is still very playable, and a 1% low of 51 frames per second, so it's pretty smooth as well. Switching up to 1440p sees this average go down to 40 FPS with a 1% low of 30 frames per second, so at 1440p, I don't recommend enabling ray tracing. For that matter, I don't recommend ray tracing in F123 on an RK750 at all. Horizon Zero Dawn was a bit of a weird one today. Setting it to the ultimate quality preset, which is essentially ultra, saw incredibly high CPU usage, even compared to more powerful GPUs, which I've tested with my 12400F. I tried restarting the game, restarting the PC, but I have watched other benchmarking videos and CPU usage was very high in them as well. So it's got to be down to an Intel Arc thing or maybe something on Horizon Zero Dawn side. And because of this performance was mediocre at best. Getting 63 FPS on average with 44 FPS for the 1% low at 1080p is kind of disappointing in my opinion. Yes, it's playable, but other GPUs for around this price point are probably getting more frames per second than this. And switching up to 1440p barely reduces the average frame rate going down by just 2 frames per second down to 61. And the 1% low actually went up by 2 frames per second going up to 46 FPS. So if you want to play Horizon Zero Dawn on an Arc GPU, I would probably advise against it. Just like Horizon Zero Dawn, CPU usage in The Witcher 3 was very high as well. On the Ultra preset at 1080p, the RK750 got 86 FPS on average with a 1% low of 66 frames per second, which in my opinion is playable performance, but you are leaving performance on the table because of that high CPU usage bug. Switching up to 1440p sees the average frame rate go down to 83 FPS, so it barely budged and the 1% low only went down by a single frame, down to 65 FPS. So if you wanted to play at 1440p in The Witcher 3, yes, that is probably the resolution of choice with the RK750, 
But then again, because of that weird CPU usage bug, I'd recommend it against an art card in this game. So after all of that benchmarking, I think it's fair to say that the RK750 certainly has its strengths and weaknesses. In newer DirectX 12 games like Cyberpunk and The Witcher 3, performance was actually pretty good at both 1080p and 1440p. This is what I was expecting as Intel art cards do tend to perform better with the newer API when compared to games which are DX11 and older. And of course, games like Rainbow Six Siege and Fortnite are going to be performing great on a GPU like this, especially Fortnite as that has the DirectX 12 API. And as we know, Arc loves DirectX 12. But that is where the good news kind of ends with this graphics card. And that is because there were some games where I thought this performance isn't the greatest, especially as there's a lot of other GPUs around this price point. The biggest one of these was probably Horizon Zero Dawn and God of War as these games were just heavily CPU bound for some reason. I'm not sure as to what was going on there. This is something I did expect from God of War as it is a DirectX 11 title. However, Horizon Zero Dawn just exhibited very high CPU usage for some reason. I'm not sure as to why this was happening as with other cars like the 6700 XT, this wasn't a problem. And I also did some looking around online to see if anyone else was having this problem and I did watch some other benchmarking videos and yes, it was a problem for them as well. So it's either something to do with Horizon Zero Dawn or it's something in Intel's driver package. But from this, I can think of one good thing and that is probably I need to upgrade the CPU in the GPU test bench. The 12400F is a decent CPU, but it's not the best in the world anymore. So I might up this to something like a 13600K or something in the future. So, can I recommend the RK750 for gaming in both 2023 and 2024? And to be fair, as always, that's a bit of a hard question to answer, but I'm going to try my best to answer it for you. For most people, I'd have to say no, unless if the RK750 is significantly cheaper by about 50 odd pounds than competing cards from both AMD and Nvidia. I say this because of just the weird issues which I face today, like the high CPU usage in Horizon Zero Dawn, and poor performance in games like God of War and other DirectX 11 titles. But on the other hand, if you're a PC tinkerer like me and you don't mind diagnosing problems, the RK750 can be found for a pretty decent deal going for around 220 odd pounds in the UK. And for that price, brand new, I think this GPU is actually quite a, uh, it's quite a cool find to be fair, because there's something about Intel Arc, despite its issues that it can have, it's just really cool for some reason and it's good to see that Intel are actually making GPUs now that there's a third manufacturer in the gaming GPU market, which is a win for everyone. The RK750 has shown that it can push out some great gaming performance when it's performing at its best, but just make sure if you're looking about picking this up that you've got a system that supports PCIe Gen 4 and it supports resizable bar because without that, this GPU's performance isn't particularly great from what I'm led to believe. Speaking of resizable bar, I'm not quite finished with the RK750 yet. I want to see what it's like in an older system, maybe something like an i7-4770, a system which doesn't support resizable bar, just to see what the performance would be like. Also, as the RK750 is priced at around 200 to 230 pounds, there's a lot of competitors at this price point, like the RX 7600 from AMD and the RTX 4060 from Nvidia. So I'll try and get my hands on some of them GPUs to compare this thing against. Right then, the RK750 when it's performing at its best is an excellent value GPU, but it does have a lot of quirks which other GPUs do not. If you were looking to pick one of these up, I highly, highly recommend getting a system with PCIe Gen 4 and resizable bar support as you kind of need it with this graphics card. Also, if you're looking for an art card, you kind of need a beefy CPU for 1080p gaming. It was maxing out my 12400F today and I've never seen that with any other GPU. So yeah, you kind of need a beefy processor. But if that's all fine for you, I would say the RK750 is a decent value graphics card and I do recommend it to a certain extent. So if you enjoyed this one, there are two other videos right here, which might be right up your alley. And if you got this far into the video, I'd like to say thank you for sticking around this long and maybe even leave a like on the video if you liked it. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one and have a good day.